<laughs> I guess I that assumes lie. that is true. We must be healthy and happy if we're talking about it. We are. I mean, if I am, are you healthy? I'm definitely healthy. Let's see these abs. Are you happy? <laughs> Yeah. No. All right, then you then you good. Then yeah, you good. Yeah. Then you good. What's up, y'all? Hola. Hey, oh, hey. Oh, oh, oh. I got a friend today. Just a little friend. It's my friend. As my it's mom my... would say. He's a little friend. Your little friend. Your little friends. Um. So, welcome to today's video. I wanted to spend some time talking about marriage and how you can have a healthy and a happy marriage. And I figure that I will bring on. The my, person she's married to. The person that I'm married to, in case you're wondering whether or not I am in a healthy, happy marriage. She can. is. The people who be in her DM, <laughs> you know. You know she's married. <laughs> you know. Uh, and we wanted to talk a little bit about that. I literally asked him to JP. And during this season of our lives, things have been a little bit different. And we have been um, dealing with some discomfort in a way that we hadn't before. And it's interesting because at the same time, I feel like this is the healthiest our marriage has ever been. This is the more honest we've ever been with each other. So I just felt like we should talk a little bit about that, about what kind of tips we have for people on how to have a healthy and happy marriage from people that are healthy and happy. So mm. would you agree that we are the healthiest we've ever been in our relationship? Uh, I would say, yeah, for sure. If it's been... I would say it's been an extended period of, of great health. Yeah, that's, that's important. <laughs> an extended period of, of great health. Like a, no real fights or arguments. Nope. It's been a, a year, a little bit over yeah, a we year. Took your birthday? Is that yeah, the last that's one I can remember? Yeah, the last remember. one I so, remember. 2018, your birthday? Yeah, 2008, September 2018 the last was the we last had time a lot of, we got an argument. Last time somebody was in their feelings about yeah. something. So yeah. we're doing all right. Yeah, but yeah. today we're we got three tips for a healthy and happy three marriage. Tips. Now, actually, so the three tips from both of us is that six tips. Is I there... mean, maybe it's gonna be six tips. If he's gonna share three tips, I'm All gonna right. share three tips. All maybe I agree one of his tips. All I don't know. Tips. Let's see. Just and maybe tips. we will do this. My idea is to try to do this with regularly. We'll see what happens. <laughs> all right, we'll see what happens. All right, go ahead. What you got? We're gonna set it up at all. We're gonna get it a little, give him a little nah, intro. Let's get, let's get let's into go the straight tips. into the tips. Let's get into the no? tips. People don't want to know that. All right. Yeah, don't uh, Tip number one, have an open dialogue and discussion all the time. <laughs> all the time. What does that mean? What does open dialogue and discussion all the time? Huh, man, that's a difficult one because <laughs> the big problem I see in, in relationships around being open and honest is that people have lied in the past and... Mm -hmm. If they want to be honest now, they would have to go back and say some things that would contradict what they said in the past. Mm. And that would show that they were not honest in the past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so that can be a difficult thing to do, particularly if you haven't been honest around maybe some infidelity mm. in a relationship and how you really feel. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, coming forward and changing your, not changing your opinion, but being totally honest mm -hmm. that can have an effect on, you know, the other mm -hmm. person that you can't necessarily control. Mm -hmm. And if that person, you know, they're going to feel, they're going to likely feel hurt you know, mm -hmm. more, more than likely. And it can be difficult for you then have to, to deal with the repercussions of that. So mm -hmm. at times it's kind of like, all right, I'm going to keep my mouth shut about all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I wish I could be more open and honest. Right. I wish I could right. tell that person, my spouse, husband, wife, partner about these things. But I'm going to keep the peace because I don't know what it's going to look like on the other side mm -hmm. of me being open and honest. I think part of the challenge of being honest is that people lie to themselves as well. Mm -hmm. So when you're lying to yourself, it's difficult to lie, to, to be truthful with another person because you start believing your own lies. And depending on how much you desire validation, how much you have a need to be um, co-signed, you might move in that direction because you want to get that validation. And mm -hmm. in some areas, you might not want to like ruffle the feathers or like, you know, shake things up because you want to keep things, you want to keep getting the attention that you're getting in the way that you're getting it. Mm -hmm. And if that means keeping that person amused or whatever, you may not be honest about your feelings because you may be like, what's the point of me being honest about this shit if that person's going to stop treating me differently? Mm -hmm. So I think that's one thing that was difficult to be honest. I know when, the times when 
we I feel like I feel like we always had an honest relationship, but the depth of our honesty where we now is kind of like you can share things with me and I can share things with you where it's like I'm not concerned about your feelings so much like you're gonna take it personally. Like I know that I can just talk to you about that stuff. I didn't always feel like that. Like sometimes I was trying to reconcile with myself about things. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'm going to bring this up to JP and he going to have an attitude because he hates when this happens. And that also kept me from being honest too. So I, I think sometimes it's also what you perceive, however you perceive the person's going to react keeps you from being honest. Mm-hmm. So I think that also gets in the way. What's up, Kevin? How you doing? Kelvin. 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 I can't see. I got my glasses on. <laughs> Oh, that derby! Didn't he say they got they had a baby? Or they pregnant? have they're having a oh, baby. Oh man, congratulations! They're gonna have a baby. So I think that's the space where honesty can be can be complex. But I do agree with you. Have an open dialogue. Yeah, that's particularly like that could be a whole conversation. That's, that could be this whole video. Um, <laughs> particularly what I find talking to um, my network is. To just, your boys and your men they, chat. They've they've been <laughs> some people have been lying in the past. Mm. And they've they've had this facade that they've kept up, so they can't they can't go back on it now because it's going to change a oh, lot of shit, yeah. right? A lot is going to change if they were now to be to be honest. And you know, I've had multiple uh, bras tell me, guys, tell me, I wish I could be as open and honest as you are with your wife. I wish we had that same level of mm-hmm. communication. But coming into this relationship. I always made it a priority to be honest. I'm I'm probably mm-hmm. one of the more, if not the most honest and upfront people that I know and, and in my network and don't yeah. typically sugarcoat things. And I had a vision of what I wanted my relationship to be like as well. You did. And lying was definitely not a part of it. Mm-hmm. Like you have to accept me for me, all that I am. Not like I had anything to hide. I wasn't trying to, I'm not a cheater. Uh, I typically, if I, if I don't want to be with you or if I'm going to step out, I'm like, all right, this ain't going to work. I'm going to go, I'm going to wow. go over here. <laughs> I'm going to go over here. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah. So, okay. communication, being open. All right. Tip number two. Tip number two. Give give the other person some space. Yes. Like, if oh my God, you need to have your own hobbies, you need to have your own friends. Yeah. It's good to have the same network, but as much as you guys are together. Mm-hmm. You know, take some time apart. Now we live and work in the same place, so for us, it's even more important that we get out and do things. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But you know, there are some some couples, some relationships where the partner always wants to be with the other person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. all the time, and then the mm-hmm. other person like, I need I need my space. I can't quite yeah. get it. And and they leave the house, and they're they're trying to figure out where they at. They text yeah. them, they're calling them. That just speaks to trust issues in a relationship. Yeah. Uh, if if you can't let your partner leave the house without you having to text yeah. and yeah. check in on them and make sure they're not doing they're not supposed to do. Once again, going back to a history. That's, that's, <laughs> that's bad. And that's hard for people because when people stay in relationships where the trust has been broken and they don't fully forgive and release and be like, I'm going to stop living in the past and we're going to move forward then they continue to be afraid and they operate over a space of fear. And with us, we've been very transparent from the beginning. Like, we gonna be honest about everything. If you're trying to do something else, let's discuss what that looks like first as a team. <laughs> and then we can make a decision on that. But I think for people in some relationships, it's hard because they trying to, they trying to control someone that they can't control. And if someone wants to step mm-hmm. out in a relationship whether they live five miles away from you or they live three, four states away from you, they gonna find a way to do it. And I think us being in a long distance relationship really helped a lot with that because although I don't think they needed a lot of help because we came really open about how we are, but being in a long distance relationship for two years, mm-hmm. we it was kind of like, all right, well, JP gonna do JP and I'm gonna do me. Like, what's the point of worrying? Is he cheating or is he not cheating? Because he could very well be, and I would have no idea. So mm-hmm. I think that is, it's like a misuse of your energy yes. to continue. And anytime you're like looking through phones and things like that. And I will say, I have looked through JP's phone. I looked through JP's phone once and I am so bad at it. I got caught in the middle of it. And he was like, why are you looking at my phone? And it was around my birthday. And I went to the business for my birthday. Remember that year in the Bronx? <laughs> and he yeah. was like, 
what are you doing? And I'm like, I don't know. I just wanted to know you do for my birthday. He was like, you're annoying. <laughs> <laughs> so even things like that, like Kat, whenever you find yourself doing things of that nature, you got to ask yourself, what is prompting me to want to do that? Mm-hmm. And am I going to, one thing that JP used to always ask me, you know, like tell me is like, hey, when people find things on people's phone, does that change the outcome? Are you going to do something differently? Mm-hmm. Like if you go snooping and you found something, are you going to leave? And I find that a lot of people are not going to They're do not going nothing. To like they'll find it. They like, they just want to know. And I'm like, you want to know, but you're not going to walk out. So you're still in the situation and now you're checking the phone. Now your energy is being exerted in that way. So I definitely agree with you um, on that tip, whatever it I was. I had a couple of girls. I wouldn't particularly go through my phone, but I wasn't, I wasn't dating her. She was mad. But I'm like, we're not together. So how you mad? Together, together. Right. How you mad? <laughs> That's a whole but you already knew. I already told you yep. what the deal yep. was. So yep. you, I said, don't go. You go through my phone. You're gonna be upset. So then, 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 don't do it. <laughs> Unless you're ready for it. Unless you're ready, and you're gonna do something with it. But if your intuition is telling you that there's something going on, there probably is something yeah. going on, and then you have to decide how are you gonna respond. When you get the evidence that something is right. going on. My question is, if your man or woman is a liar and you know it, why are you still with them? That's my... Stop. <laughs> I'm a fan of self. It's honestly uh-huh. truly important to your relationship. And to, is trust important to your relationship? Is trust more important than companionship? And I think as we get older, being in our 30s, it's easy to be like, I'm just trying to be with somebody. I'm trying to be alone in these streets. And we start compromising things that were non-negotiable to us because we want to be with somebody. And there, I'm not talking about you shouldn't compromise. That's not what I'm saying. But things like trust, you want to ask yourself, is trust going to bring my relationship a lot of joy or is it going to take away the joy? And that's how you can evaluate how to compromise on some things or not like I'm not compromising on trust. Like, if I can trust you, we really can't be together. Because that's a lot. Like, you marry somebody, you're having sex, you're having unprotected sex. And if you don't trust that person, you will end up with something and then it may not be curable. So. Is trust an expectation? Oh, it might be. Yeah. I think it is an ex- it's an implied expectation that people don't discuss openly. Because they assume that people are just going to yeah. do it. That's so difficult because we try to live off of a model like no having expectations because mm-hmm. then you can't get mad, but you're married. So, you know, society kind of says, Ability. hey, here comes a list of expectations mm-hmm. with marriage. And we've kind of been trained that way mm-hmm. throughout our lives that when you're married, there are certain things you do and you don't do. Mm-hmm. Even by by law, there are some things that you, you don't and you don't Adultery. do. Yeah. I think you have the expectation, but then there's also the conversation. Like you and I had a conversation about what were the things that were important to us in our relationship. Mm-hmm. So while trust might be an implied expectation, I think people are pretty verbal about it. They're verbal about wanting trust, about being mm-hmm. like, I don't want to be able to trust you. I think what it comes down to is like they don't define trust. Mm-hmm. And they if they define trust, once the trust is broken, there are no consequences. So they not taking steps to like mm-hmm. move past that. And I think that that can get really difficult. Like if if you cheat on me, I'm out. That's just how that's gonna work. Mm-hmm. Where you going? I don't know. I'm mm-hmm. going somewhere on the Ain't gonna find nobody as good as me. Bro, you already know people in my DMs, so don't even Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Once again, like I said, I know they're in your DMs, but, and I still stand by that statement. <laughs> <laughs> a mess. Uh, number three. What you, what you have number three. three. Uh, so I guess it would be around the the expectation, which is mm-hmm. don't really have any expectations don't because expectations. as much as we want people to stay the same, as much as we may have an idea of what marriage should look like, mm-hmm. all that is is what you think is not. It has nothing to do with the other person. They're their own human. Mm-hmm. They were raised differently. They have their own mm-hmm. experiences. Mm-hmm. They're going to do things that don't make sense to you at all. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, you can't, if you learn not to have any expectations over it, not to get upset about it, mm-hmm. 
not to cause arguments over things that don't really matter, mm. you can yeah. be a lot happier. And that's something that we we have to learn definitely yeah. about each other, particularly from our earlier parts of marriage, even living together before we were married. That's something I have uh, to recommend. Of, like. of expectations <laughs> that each of us had on how things were going to work. Um, not even like as a couple, but just like living together, that type of dynamic. And I've talked to once again, I've talked to bros about that and them, you know, telling me that, hey, you know, I was raised this way, she was yeah. raised that way. Yeah. And whenever we get into an argument, it's about, well, I was raised like this or I was raised like that. And you're trying to reconcile what is the actual way we should move forward. And I did come in with some some preconceived notions. In my relationship, you know, I wanted everything to be 50-50 split down the middle, like pretty much everything. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if if there was something that we work on, all right, you take your half, <laughs> I take my half, we split it up. Um, and I thought that was fair, you know, yeah. whether that, that's right or wrong. I thought that was my that was my concept of of fair. So, you know, it turns out that hey, actually, it doesn't that that's not that was an expectation too. Yeah. You know, expectation of what is yeah. fair and what's not fair. So just be be willing to accept the other person yeah. changing and their opinions are definitely going to differ from from yours and just let it go man it's not even that that serious yeah. like it's not that deep i mean i'm gonna give an example of something you're gonna be like jp this is crazy but there's something about me that is so much about efficiency that it just mm. it just drives me crazy for no reason like I, this this makes no sense so i don't know if i ever told you this so you when you use the microwave you don't press the number of minutes you want. You press 30 seconds like eight times to get to the time. <laughs> so she's like, <laughs> instead of pressing this one button, you can press four minutes with one button. But nope, she goes, <laughs> and it doesn't make sense that that gets to me, right? That, that's, that's, it doesn't matter. In the grand scheme of things, it's first fucking four all, seconds. The first time I even hear this. Exactly. Why? Because it doesn't matter. That's what I would tell. <laughs> That shit doesn't matter, right? But that's the type of shit that'd be on my mind. That'd be like, why is she doing that? Just press the one fucking button. <laughs> but once again, like that stuff don't that's matter. Hilarious. And that's those are the type of things that arguments happen over in, in households. And maybe not be that minute, but it's like, why are you doing that like that? Like, do it this way. And it's like, it don't matter. Just because that's you get irritated by it. I know, right? It just talks about humans, right? This like, is crazy. I, I've literally never heard this before, which is why I'm laughing. Yeah, I know. I know. That's, why I'm, doing it. that's <laughs> why I'm using it as this what? example because you've never heard it before. Oh, it's funny. man. I talk too much. I probably already told you the things I find annoying. Probably. Like, I, I can't keep them. Yeah. I, just, I just share them. I'm laughing also because one of my students is on, I'm watching and she's like, grocery store on Saturdays when you were talking about expectations. Mm -hmm. So when JP and I first got married, talking about expectations, one of the things that I came in with was thinking that when people are married, my my parents, they'll go to the grocery store every Saturday morning together. It was like their thing. Like they just went, woke up in the morning. It was unspoken. My dad might fuss about it, but he'll like just go with my mom. And when we got married, I thought that was how marriage worked. Like you just got up together at eight in the morning on Saturdays and went to the grocery store and JP was not down with the shit. And that was that caused some conflict. I literally to... <laughs> walked past the store twice a day and said, Babe, I will bring you whatever you want from the store on the five days a week that I run past the store twice a day, <laughs> 10 times a day. I go past the grocery store. I'm not trying to go on Saturday. I don't need to. I got all my stuff. But feel free to go, babe. I remember feel when I used to, to get go. annoyed because I wanted to go. I was like, I, I don't want you to pick them up because I want to touch my own vegetables. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and now she don't want to go to the grocery <laughs> store at all. She's like, I'm sending you my list. <laughs> I went to the store today, so I do go to the store. I said want. Yeah, you're, you're, right. Right. you're, you're right. right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> and that's an example of how it is in relationships. Like, you come in, when, when you marry someone, you come in with your set of values, and they come in with their set of values, and then you have a choice. Are you going to put all these values on the table as a combined pile and make a decision on what you keep and what you let go of? Or are you going to start bumping heads because you're trying to force your values onto the other person? And a lot of people that are in healthy relationships or relationships that have a lot of conflict is because they're trying to force their value into the other person. Mm -hmm. And we've realized that really early on. Actually, I would say we realized that before we even got married, because when we were engaged, we went to counseling. We were like, we saw some things flaring up and we we're like, we need to talk to somebody about this. And when we went to counseling, we realized that we were doing this. We were bumping into each other because we were trying to put the other person's value into the other person. 
And after counseling, we started to put all these things on the table, which we thought we had done coming in. We just didn't realize all the expectations that we had not considered because you have a lot of expectations that you don't even know you have. So then it was like, okay, we know these expectations are out there. When they show up, let's bring them to the table and let's decide whether we want to keep them or not. And that's something that I think has really helped our relationship where now it's sort of like before we even bring it to the table, we check with ourselves so it doesn't even make it to the table because it's like this is unnecessary. Like, this doesn't help our this doesn't bring us closer to a healthier, happier marriage. Like, why are you mm-hmm. even engage with this? Um, and I think even though we live in the same house, we do give each other a lot of space. Like I this is my office, this is like the office. Um, I used to call it my office, but it's really the office. Like sometimes there people come in here if I want to be in the living room. And this gives us an opportunity to just be here, be in our, he's over there, I'm over here, or I'm over there, he's over here. And he gives me, he'll go walking around, I'll go walking around by myself, like do things without your spouse. Like as much fun as I have with JP and I do, I literally want to do everything with him. I understand that not doing things with him is equally important so that I can miss him and I can, you know, go spend time with other people. So I think that's also really critical in a relationship. So, all right. Oh, we already went way over our usual amount of time on here. How much time were you trying to go? I don't know. You got, you got something else you want to share? Uh, well, you want to give a, a bonus tip? I mean, go Ooh, to a, bonus a, tip a bonus tip. For staying with um, us till now, bonus tip. <laughs> um, bonus tip to a happy marriage. If there is something that neither of you want to do, pay somebody else to do it. Yes. <laughs> that is a great pay bonus Pay somebody trip. else to do it. Yeah. Bring somebody in to do it. Yeah. Our example is cleaning. I am not against it, but if the other person I'm partnered <laughs> with or people I'm living with aren't going to pitch in, I'm not trying to do it by myself. First of all, I just want to clarify that when he says pitch in, it's pitch in how he wanted him to pitch in 50, 50, on, the time, on the time 50. frame that he wants him to pitch in, in <laughs> the, the time, methodology, on the time frame, in the methodology right? and I would, process yes, I would like the that he to would be like clean to be pitched in. It's not on a regular thing. basis, not it's a monthly basis. How he wants it to be clean, when he wants it to be clean. It's like, if you can't agree on that, I would say yes. that's what it is. Yes. That's that's the so, yeah, pay somebody else to do that. Mainly cleaning, because that's probably the biggest thing people people have an issue with. Yeah. Then we get into gender roles, who's supposed to yeah. do what, who takes out the yeah. garbage, yeah. who washes the dishes, vacuums, yeah. all that, blah, 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 yeah. blah, blah. And even cooking. So right now we have we have someone that cooks our food. We work with this chef here in St. Pete and he drops some food for us. And which is crazy because I used to cook all the time. Like I love cooking. But as I got more into the business and I also just stopped wanting to go to the grocery store, like I began <laughs> to be, I began to pick up from him on this efficiency situation that it was new to me because I hadn't really lived my life on like, how can I be more efficient? I just kind of live my life and go with the wind fabulous. You know what I mean? Like that's my vibe. But with JP being so like programmed for efficiency, I'm like, okay, let's do things a little more efficient. And I'm like, mm-hmm. let's, let's have somebody come and cook the food for us. We don't have to go to the grocery store. They could bring it in. Then this is already cooked. We can tell them how we want it to make, be made. And it's great. You know, mm-hmm. right now I'm about to transition into being plant based. Um, and that's going to require me to do some work with the chef around how I want my food. But that does not affect him at all. He'll continue getting his food. He's not going to do with him. And I think sometimes we just want people to like do the thing because we want them to do it. And that doesn't mean that you're happier at the end of the day. Right. And here in our marriage, in, in the council household, being right is less important than being happy and at peace. It's what brings peace to our relationship. And if something brings peace to the relationship, then that automatically overrides being right mm-hmm. or wanting to be, having the person be wrong. Like that doesn't right. matter to us at all. And if you say you can't, for some reason, don't want to get it farmed out or have somebody else to do it, mm-hmm. do it yourself. Don't. Don't oh, yes. pester the other person. Yes. If there's something you feel that needs to be done, yes. you should do it. Yes, yes, yes. I'm going to give you a bonus book. You yeah, didn't ask for it, but. <laughs> of course. You're going to need it. <laughs> what are we looking at? Uh, of course. Of course. Of course. The, of the, course. the best book. All right. We're going to give you a, we gave you a bonus tip. Now we're going to give you a bonus book. So JP and I are avid readers. Y'all know this. Um, if you don't, we are. You know uh, now. You know now. <laughs> and. 
The book we want to share with you is called The Four Tendencies by Gretchen Rubin. This is a book that JP purchased and learned about when I was going through depression. And I feel like you were just trying to figure me out. Uh, well, I, I had read her other book, which we have in the other room. No, Better Than Before. Okay. And she talks about this framework called The Four Tendencies in that book. And I was like, you know, this rebel person sounds a lot like my wife. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to get this book and check out what she's talking about. And turns to find out my wife was a rebel. And that's one of the tendencies that she talks about yep. in the book. And yep. so from that, so we're talking about expectations and getting people to to do things that you want to do or things that they said they wanted to do. Yeah. Or, yeah, say things that they wanted to do. And. I learned from the book that as a rebel, you know, it's it's really hard for her to do the things that other people want her to do, but it's also mm -hmm. hard for her to do the things that she wants to do unless she really wants to do it. So mm -hmm. our favorite example is laundry. I would wash. I thought you were going to go with dishes, but okay. No, it wasn't the dishes. I would wash the clothes. Oh, yes. And she was to <laughs> fold the clothes. Fold the clothes. And she wouldn't. Both the we agreed, like we was in agreement. So, hey, marriage, happy marriage. We're agreeing to the housework. We're living together. This was before we got married. This was when we were engaged, yeah. and we were agreeing to split this. All right, I'm gonna wash them. You fold them. I'm like, cool, perfect. <laughs> well, they would get washed, wouldn't necessarily get folded, <laughs> and so I'm like, well, I don't think she's like purposely trying to you know, make me mad about this, even though I am, <laughs> I am a little upset that these clothes aren't folded because we agreed to it. Yeah. My personality, I'm really big on, hey, you said you're going to do it, agree to it, yeah. stay to your, stick to your, what you said. But I read the book and found out that, hey, it wasn't necessarily anything against me. It was, it was her, it was her mm -hmm. personality and she really didn't want to do the launch. She didn't want to fold. But she felt like she had to because society. He so came so, with his 50 50 mentality and he sounded yeah, good to me in theory. Good, right? like, society yeah. says, you know, the house, we should split it up. Yeah. The man, you got the man, he'd want to wash the clothes. Yeah. <laughs> so I said, washing is the easiest part. <laughs> it is. <laughs> well, what is, what's is. hard about washing clothes, first of all? It, it, there's it, nothing hard about washing clothes. Folding is more work. Now that you, you think, now that you say you it. work. Whatever you got, you say it regardless. Bottom line, I agreed <laughs> to do it and I wasn't doing it, and that actually really helped me understand more about myself, which is bonus tip number two. <laughs> we're, getting, we're getting to six since you're already here. We're getting to six. Bonus slowly. tip number two is when you marry someone, do your best not to intentionally stifle their growth. When JP started telling me about these things about myself. I got defensive. Like, I was like, what are you talking about? This is, matter of fact, it took me like six months to read that book, probably. And I got really defensive about it, but he was just trying to understand. And in his quest to understand, he was learning things about me that I didn't know about myself or I hadn't noticed about myself. And when you are have a partner, it's your defense mechanism to want to, is your like inclination to want to defend yourself and to want people to be wrong about you because you feel like you know yourself. But people know things about you that you don't know about you, or maybe you haven't noticed because they get to see you from a different perspective. So do not allow, like, don't get caught up on that part because you want to you wanna learn more about yourself so that you can master yourself. So you can be a better partner to them, but you can be a better human to yourself too. And if you know that you don't do well in certain environments and things impact in a certain way, that is probably how it happens with work. That's how it happens with your friends, with your family, and you can take the stuff you're learning to put it in the, to put in towards like those things too. So, not don't get in the way of your partner's growth. Like when they're growing, let them grow, and it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be fun. You're not going to like it. You might be mad, like somebody was about the clothes, um, but that's just on the in the long term, it's going to help them become a better partner to you and, and a better part of the marriage. So once once they read the book, they once they read the book. <laughs> I think that's what we got. Those, uh, we gave y'all some bonus tips. We gave you a book. Um, you have questions for us? I'm going to look here. I keep on looking this way because here's where the computer is. 
so that we can look at the comments. Yeah, okay? You don't have to explain yourself. I just want to share. <laughs> Why are you not looking at us? Right. If I, I'll have that question if I was watching. So but something else is going on there. No, y'all are important to know too now. All right. Let me have questions. Let's see what's going on in this comment section. Washing is the easiest part. I'm not gonna disagree with that. Um so there's a lot more comments. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I gotta do this to pull it up. Yeah. Okay. Let's see what other questions do I got. Gender roles can definitely make things difficult. Absolutely. Especially when you're not ready to let them go. Um, laundry. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sharon likes my earrings. All right. So I think we got through everyone's comments here. We see no questions. Oh, oh, there is a question. How do you start receiving feedback? How do you start receiving it? Well, so I guess that means at the moment you're not receiving it. So that either means A, the other person isn't giving it or B, you are resistant to it. So Which one is it? Um, if the other person isn't giving it, you can't force them. You can ask them though. You can ask them, yes. But they have to be to be willing to give you that feedback. And you, I guess it kind of goes both ways because if the person isn't even giving it, also may feel that you're resistant mm -hmm. to it. And that's just that's natural. Yanori tells me things all the time. And I'd be like, I didn't even ask you that, though. Like, why are you telling me that? It's information you need to know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's also part of her ego. She just wants to tell me stuff all the time. Oh, so about your rebel self, how do you start receiving feedback as a rebel? Okay. That's a, that, I can understand that question now. So as a rebel, one of the things, in spite of being a rebel, I don't know if it's, part, it's unique to my tendency or not, but like, in spite of being a rebel, I'm also really committed to getting to know myself. So even though I might not like the feedback, I was grateful to JP for sharing the feedback eventually because he helped me understand myself better. So I think you start receiving the feedback when you realize that this is going to help you. This is helpful information to you. And the more you learn about yourself, the happier you are because you get to learn these things about yourself and you can change them if you want to. Or you can utilize them to be a better partner, to be a better mom, a better sister, uh, a daughter, or whatever. And it was difficult at the beginning to hear the feedback because I thought I was perfect, obviously. And when I learned I wasn't, and when I also learned that not only was I not perfect, but I was behaving in a way that I thought I was never going to behave like, <laughs> <laughs> which is the hard part. It's like, not only are you not perfect, but you're really acting in a way that you definitely thought you were above it. Like, I'm like, this is beneath me. And that was like a humbling experience. So you got to get humble first because you got to accept that you're not the person you think you are, that you are actually not the highest version of yourself that you can imagine, but you're more like the lowest version of yourself that you can accept. And once you realize that, then it's a little bit easier to be like, how do I actually become this high version of myself that I think I am instead of being this low person, this low version of myself that I actually am right now. And that was eye opening. And I also wanted to have a happier relationship. And I just knew that my behavior at the time was causing a lot of conflict. And I just didn't want to have that conflict. Like, I'm like, I don't want to be in a relationship where we're always arguing about dishes and laundry. Like, I don't care about that. Um, and eventually it was like, I care more about that, that I was like, let's, let's talk about it. Let's look at the feedback, tell me what it is. And I'm going to work through healing through it so I can make the changes. Cause that also takes a little bit of patience too. I was just about to use that word patience and yeah. it can be hard to have the patience. I've probably developed a lot more being married because where we're going, like I'm not leaving cause she not <laughs> didn't agree with it. Like I'm not leaving because of that. So you got to you got to be patient with with people and she's been patient with me as, as well with things so patience is definitely a word that mm -hmm. that we have to develop and you know it's not it's not something we naturally have we always want it now yeah. we can press a button we can get food delivered we can get everything we want at our door amazon's here tomorrow sometimes today if we early if we order early mm -hmm. enough and you know we were in the world of instant gratification and not everything that like even in our business that is something that's taken a lot of patience. Things Chef. things never quite happen as fast as mm. we expect them to. And when you're dealing with humans, that is definitely 
true as well. So developing patience, learning how to let other people learn on their schedule and everybody mm -hmm. learns as fast. You know, everything is based on our, our past. Some things were, mm -hmm. were deeply ingrained with us and it takes a while for us to get unrooted from our routines and mm -hmm. the things that we've learned to unlearn them. Mm -hmm. And having having that patience is definitely a, a big, mm -hmm. a big key. Meet yourself where you are so that you can be able to meet other people where they are too. And I back to like, to bring it full circle, people lying to themselves. You may be thinking like you are a thousand steps ahead of where you actually are. So you expecting people to be also a thousand steps ahead of what they actually are. But when you start to be honest about where you really are and how challenging these things are for you and, you know, how you honestly feel about them and how they honestly are impacting your perspective, then you can start to give other people more grace because you're giving yourself more grace. And that was something that that I had to do in that relationship. And I think we both had to have had to do in our, in our marriage. And now the, the grace is not something that I have to think about. It's more like, I know JP's not trying to get me out here. I know he's not trying to be petty. I know he's trying to get in my feelings about this. Like he's generally trying to understand or he's unaware. So I feel sorry for you if you're in a petty relationship. My heart, my heart goes out to you. You and Petty Patty, Patty Patrick, whoever it is. I feel for you. We can't bring that in here because they would literally, it would, it would be like Armageddon. It's called mutual assured destruction. destruction. Like it just would not end well. Both of you all. need to be the adult. <laughs> all right. I think we got it. You're very welcome. Share and suspense. You're very welcome. All right. Let us know if you enjoyed this. Uh, quick sit down with the pencils. And if you would like to see this type of things again, and JP and I may or may not do it. We'll see. We will. We will do it. We'll, I, I really want to do it like once a week. I think we can commit to that. I think we like can. Like one day and we just come and talk to y'all about marriage. All right. All righty. Have an amazing day. Enjoy the holidays if you're into that. Um, and we will see you. We will see you next time. Next week, maybe. Next week, maybe. Maybe. Hasta luego. Later. Bye.